Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1404. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got to see how to calculate sales per working day. And we're going to use formulas for this three-year report. Now, here's the final version. We're going to have a lower and upper date. We'll have to calculate total sales. And the tricky part will be number of working days. Now, we have our sales table here. There's the order date and sales. And over here, we have dates and then a second column with Workday. Now, one of the problems here is this data set, if I control down arrow, it will continually get new records. So we're only up to 11-15-2009. And we want our formulas to work and automatically calculate correctly as we add new records. If we go up to the date table, the date table goes all the way down to 2011. So this is our key to tell us which possible days are work day and which ones are not a work day. Control Home. The other problem, too, for us is when we copy the single formula down, we want to make sure and get the proper count in August here, because we're only up through in our sales table up through 1115. And then, of course, for December, we should get a count of 0. Now let's go over to the sheet 1404. First, we want a single start date and then all of our dates to appear. We're going to have a single cell that simply points to the start date tab. And then from that start date, we can use the end of month function. So I'm going to take that relative cell reference, comma. Months, if I give it 1, it will give me the end of next month. Minus 1 gives me the end of last month, and 0 is what we want for the current month. Enter. Now I can calculate a formula a couple different ways. I'm going to say, hey, please get the relative cell reference, the end of last month, plus 1. Now I can copy this one down. And because I want subtotals in the middle, I'm very carefully going to copy this down just so that I see the first 12 months for lower and upper. And then this row is going to be a different set of dates. The formulas over here will work the same. But I'm simply going to put the beginning of the year tab. And then notice that one copied down. That's not what I want. I want to say equals. And please give me the end of the year. So once we have our patterns of dates, I can copy these formulas, Control-C. That one's not going to work, but watch this. I'm going to Control-V. And since that is improperly looking up there, this one is looking to the end of the previous month, so I'm going to copy that formula up. Now I'm going to copy, Control-C, Control-V. And then these will be the full three-year period. So I'm going to say equals. The very first date up at the top, tab, and then equals one cell above. Now, I did it this way. We could have done this a, diff a couple of different ways. But I wanted our formulas to always have the right lower and upper date, no matter what the granularity was, whether it was month for the year or for the grand overall total for the year. Oh, man, look at these little triangles here. I'm going to highlight all of these and then point to the little smart tag and say, ignore error. All right, total sales is pretty straightforward. We need to find from this column only the sales that are greater than or equal to the lower and less than or equal to the upper. The perfect function for that is the sum ifs function, the sum range. Now, these are Excel tables. I've already converted them to tables using Control-T and then named them. Actually, I'm going to hit Escape. I already did insert table right there, or Control T. And then I made sure and went and named these. Equals sum ifs. And then we need our sum range. And the cool thing about tables is if we hover our cursor right at the top and we see that black downward pointing arrow, I can click and it puts the proper table name and field name or column name in square brackets. That's the convention when we use Excel tables. Comma, criteria range. And then do the same thing so when I see my black downward pointing arrow. Boom, there it is, F sales, square brackets, order date, comma. That's the first criteria range. But we need criteria, which is greater than or equal to the lower. In double quotes, we have to put our comparative operator. 
So greater than or equal to and and double quotes. That's the way sum ifs works when we have comparative operators. Now we need to join that to our cell reference. So I use Shift 7, the ampersand. And now I'm going to click on the lower. That construction there is very convenient because the same comparative operator will be used, but that relative cell reference will always see the lower. Now I type a comma, and I'll get the order date again. Black downward pointing arrow, click, comma. Now we double quotes less than or equal to for the upper ampersand and then the upper date. And that formula will give us our total sales. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I'm going to double click and send this down and very carefully go down to the bottom. And when I see my Smart Tag, I'm going to point to Please Fill Without Formatting, because I already added bold. Now notice, because we set up the upper and lower limit for the granularity we wanted, our formula works. Number of days is going to be the tricky part. Because we need to, in our counting formula, look at the lower and upper here for the month. But then we also need to look over here and find out which days are work days and which ones are not. So we're actually going to use count ifs. That will be the lower and upper criteria, similar to the criteria we used for our sales formula. But we'll always look over here at this date column in our date table. So you ready? Equals count ifs. In our criteria range, let me use my black downward pointing arrow. Now these dates, of course, that's a unique list of all the dates from the first of the year 2005 all the way to the end of the year 2011. Criteria range, comma. Now we go, hey, are any of you in double quotes greater than or equal to and join to the lower limit, comma. We'll go over and get our dates, comma. In double quotes, less than or equal to for the upper limit, ampersand, and there is the upper, comma. And then our criteria range 3, that's going to be the work day. So I see the work day, comma. And then our criteria will be work day over here. If this is something that's never going to change, you could hard code it in. But I'm going to leave it there like that, F4 to lock it. And that will almost work. Close parentheses, Control Enter. And now I'm going to double click and send it down and quickly go to the bottom and say Fill Without Formatting. Now, the problem is here because it's looking at the entire date table over here, which has all of the dates. Remember, we need our formula to somehow recognize that our sales table only has dates up through 1115, I think it is. So how could we do that? Well, if we notice, our formula is looking at that as the upper limit. Well, what if instead of looking there, we actually look over into our data set and say, please find the max date that is less than or equal to this upper limit. Now, this means we're going to be using the max function with a single condition. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. I'm going to use the brand new max ifs functions. Now, you have to have Excel 2016, Office 365, and you have to be connected to the Insider program. If you don't have this function, I will show you in just a moment how to do it in all of the earlier versions. But max ifs is exactly what we want here. The max range, remember now we actually have to look through the order date. So I'm going to click on that top when I see my black downward pointing arrow. That's the max range, comma. Now, the criteria range is going to be the same. And watch this. I'm going to click on max range, control C, then click on criteria range, control V. Now, comma, criteria in double quotes, less than or equal to ampersand, the upper limit. So it'll always be looking over here. And for this month, it's looking for everything less than or equal to 1130. Well, the biggest date it will find is 1115. If we were in this category right here, of course, then it would find everything less than 1031, 2009. And there are some transactions for that particular date. So that will work. Criteria 1, close parentheses. So what we did there in count ifs. Criteria 2, 
is we use max ifs to get an alternating or changing upper limit for each one of the categories. And notice when it gets down to this one, we'll try and find something greater than or equal to 12, 1, and in an and logical test, something less than or equal to 12, 31, and it won't find any. So the count will be 0. Control, Enter. Now I'm going to copy it down and then point to that smart tag fill without formatting, and then copy it up. And here's the smart tag fill without formatting. That was the hard part. Now we can do our sales per working day. But let's first look at how to do this in earlier versions. Now, if you have 2007 or earlier, well, we don't have max ifs, but we can simply put the if function right inside the max, saying if that range is directly less than or equal to that upper limit, then put those values in. So we, we simply put the if. Now, this is an array formula, so you have to enter it with Control, Shift, and Enter. I'm going to hit Escape. In 2010 or later, we would use aggregate function. The aggregate function has a number of different functions. 14 is large. The 6 tells the function to ignore errors. Then we take the actual order dates and divide it by the logical test. Anytime there's a false, it'll get an error. So in essence, the errors are filtering out the values. And then when because we have 1 in K, aggregate will always get the max. All right, so three different ways to do our number of working days. Now, sales per working day is straightforward. Equals, hey, I'm going to take total sales divided by number of working days. Control, Enter. Double click and send it down and point to the fill handle fill without formatting. Now, how do we get rid of that divide by 0? Well, we can use the if function. Now, notice divide by 0 means we have a 0 here, and all the other circumstances will have numbers or positive numbers, F2. Well, we can definitely use the if function. But guess what? Comma, the value of true will be that formula. But let's go back to the logical test. Logical test means we need a true or false here. And luckily, Excel interprets 0 as false and any non-zero number as true. So I can simply use the actual number, relative cell reference, as my logical test. When it sees a number there, meaning true, it'll run the formula value of true. Otherwise, and I'm going to put a 0 for value of false. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, double click and send it down, come to the bottom. Or is that smart tag fill without formatting? And there we go. Now, as we fill out our records in our sales table, these formulas will automatically update. And I only did this to 2009. We certainly could have built this all the way down to the 2011 total. All right, that was a little fun with calculating sales per working day. We saw how to use end of month and a regular straight formula. Copy that down how to use some ifs for total sales, count ifs and some sort of max ifs for number of working days, and then the if function for sales per working day. All right, we'll see you next video.